Hello and what's up, GSC Pokemon Challenges fam. How are you guys doing? It's been a minute, sorry. We've been kind of busy over on the main channel, but we're back on this grind. We are going to find out how many of these next 14 challengers can beat Falconer on minimum battles. Now, we're getting pretty deep into this. I'm going to have to resize the um, little sprites again in order to make them fit because we've already beaten Faulkner with 58 Pokemon. We've failed with 35. Some people have already been messaging me about some of these failed Pokemon and ideas how to get them through. Don't worry about that. When we finish this whole series, once we get through all 251, I'm going to go back and look at some of these close cases and just see if we get better ranges or if there was a slight alteration to strategy in order to get them through. I'm definitely learning as I go along. So there are some of these that I think might have had a chance if I had just changed up my strategy ever so slightly. But we'll go back, we'll test those. And uh, for today, we're starting off with the Poliwag line, which is kind of interesting because it's the first Pokemon, I think ever in the series, that got like a divergent evolution, right? The Politoed versus Polyrath. We're gonna check this out. So we're gonna start off by running Polyrath, then we're gonna do Politoed, then we'll come back to the unevolved forms. Then we got the Abra line, the Machop line, the Hoppip line is probably gonna be terrible in this one. And then we've got Apem. So let's get into it. Let's start off with Polyrath. Let's see how this goes. All right, so we have put Polyrath into the Total Dial Ball. Makes sense, right? We have to go up against our um, rivals, Chikorita. But here we go, we have a Polyrath. And we start with Water Gun, Hypnosis, Double Slap, and Submission. <laughs> what? What is this? Oh my god. But uh, okay, we've got Water Gun, we've got Double Slap. This should be fine. Submission is kind of terrible, but we'll see. We'll see how it actually plays out in a, in a run. We are playing with no wild Pokemon, as is very standard for me. And uh, yeah, we're just going to run through this as quick as possible. Now, some predictions for today. I think fully evolved forms are generally going to get through Faulkner without too much difficulty. That being said, I think that, yeah, we're going to have some of these unevolved forms get completely wrecked. Now, one thing that you guys have been telling me is to come here and talk to this guy so that we can get another berry. <laughs> See, I learn things every day. Yeah, it's good to know that there's one there. Apparently, there's one that I can get from the Ruins of Alf as well. We'll see if I need that one or not. Usually, the Pidgey guy, Rod, we don't we don't need anything for, for God, Rod. <laughs> he, he gets wrecked every time. But, um, yeah, we have an extra berry, so... We don't have to make quite as many decisions about where to keep berries and where not to use them. So, hey, that's that's a small improvement. So here, I'm going to save the game. This is still a spot where I think I want to take the berry off. And it's just so that it doesn't accidentally activate because I just don't think Polyrath is going to need it. I think we're going to wreck this one. Let's try. So here we go, rival one. And uh, everybody was noting that I always thought that fighting was resisted by grass, and apparently it's not. It's just the fact that all the Gen 1 grass types are basically grass poison. Poison does resist fighting. So let's test it. There's our submission. Okay. Yeah, it, it does not seem to be resisted. So good on you guys. <laughs> you know more about Pokemon than I do. <laughs> I mean, for, for what it's worth, I just remembered the type chart for practical purposes you know like i don't actually look them all up and obsess about it too much but uh, oh i just named my rival a a a a a <laughs> we can we can always change that in the back end but i don't think we need to i think this is fine this youngster is gonna be a joke come on come on look at that pidgey coming out we're just like hey get submitted <laughs> and how about this uh Rat, get submitted. There we go. So a couple submissions did the job there. And we can grab that Pokeball for later when we need an HM Pokemon. I'm debating how to handle HM Pokemon in this. I have a couple ideas. But for simplicity, I may just end up giving a Mew to everything. 
that knows all the required HM moves, maybe two Mews, and then just go from there. All right, we have made it to Falconer's Gym. Let's go ahead and check this situation here with our Polyrath. We are at level seven. We've got 31 HP. Water Gun, Hypnosis, Double Slap, and Submission is the move set. Now we've got 19 attack, 20 in defense, 17 special attack, 19 special defense, 17 speed. We're a little bit more defensive and physically physical attack oriented here. But uh, yeah, this is a spot where I think we do want to give a berry to this one. And we want to see if we can beat Honest Abe here. Let's go. Honest Abe, keep us honest, buddy. So here, the first strategy I'm going to go for is going to be the hypnosis strat because if we put this thing to sleep i see no way that it can beat us as long as it stays asleep for enough turns here it's looking like a four hit ko with water gun so yeah that that's perfectly fine submission is technically stronger don't get me wrong but i just don't think we want to go that route when we've got a berry on because we don't want to necessarily have to use the berry unnecessarily now here, I'm going to go and fight the god Rod. Rodney Dangerfield. He gets no respect. Come on. This guy, submission. Oh, look at the one shot. <laughs> I, th I think submission might be kind of strong when it actually hits. <laughs> oh, look at that. The god Rod gets taken down. Okay, so now we can go ahead and fight against Faulkner. Check the tail of the tape here. We are now up to level nine. So we are in the medium fast level up group. Um, we've got 38 HP. We've got water gun, hypnosis, double slap, submission. Submission seems to be hitting pretty hard. And we've got 23 attack, 25 defense, 20 special attack, 24 special defense, 20 is speed. I think that means we outspeed everything here. The biggest issue, of course, is if we look back at our typing, we're water fighting type which means a move like Gust is super effective. So we're just hoping not to take too much damage, but let's find out. I'm gonna go in without a berry first. Let's just see how this goes. Okay, so here, I think we're gonna lead off with submission. Okay, it doesn't quite one shot, but I think Water Gun will finish the job there. Level up to level 10. I'm going to try to put this Pidgeotto to sleep. There we go. So here, let's go submission. Okay. And one more submission. Oh, that was easy. Easy. <laughs> we level up to level 11. We have completely destroyed Faulkner. Just destroyed him. So, yeah. Polyrath. In spite of its type weakness against this, the fact that we have hypnosis kind of breaks things you know like i think everybody's like you know sleep was so nerfed in gen 2 i mean yes your opponent can hit you the turn they wake up but if you're not getting one shot or two shot by them i don't think it makes much difference i mean you're still just going to be able to reset and eventually win but you know <laughs> i think the move is still pretty darn broken so yeah, we get through. I think the next section against Faulkner isn't going to be too bad. I think we're just going to, you know, slap those things around and, you know, slap on some bugs. And really, I mean, when we get to Rival 2, at least we have Hypnosis and Water Gun to get through that. As long as we outspeed Bayleaf, we're, we're golden, basically. So, yeah, I think the next section is not going to be too bad. Anyway, that does it for Polyrath. Now it's time to find out how Politoed does. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. We had to reset everything on the back end, but this is fine. This is fine. It's time for Politoed. I like how they just named it basically the same. They just, you know, said this one has toes. <laughs> Apparently Polyrath has no toes. He just has really flat feet. <laughs> okay. So here we can just let Professor Elm just say all of his stuff. And we've done the exact same thing. We've replaced the middle Pokeball that is normally Totodile with Politoed. There he is. See how this Pokemon looks here. So let's see. We are starting 
with Water Gun, Hypnosis, Double Slap, and Parish Song. I do not know how Parish Song works. That's going to be interesting to find out. Um, otherwise, I mean, we look fairly similar, except we're just a mono water type. So we also don't have any weakness to flying, which is kind of good, I guess. And uh, that should, in theory at least, mean that we have an easy, even easier time. Blah. If I can speak, we should have an even easier time against Faulkner here. Not that that last one was hard, but I have to find out what Parish Song does. I think it puts your opponent like on a timer or something to die. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of like, yeah, how, how about you die? <laughs> Eventually, after after some time, uh, I I seem to remember a small ant run where he was doing like no damaging moves and he was using Parish Song, and he was then using the Poke Flute to waste turns because it was like a fire red leaf green run, and it was like, okay, I mean that's cool. All right, here, let's save the game. I'm once again going to remove my berry. And I want to test Parish Song. Let's just see here on Rival 1 how this goes. Okay. So, first things first, I'm going to use Parish Song. Okay, so both Pokemon will faint in three turns. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> I didn't intend to this. Oh, we both faint. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> okay, so it kills both of our Pokemon, so that's bad. That's bad, bad. Like, if this were a team run, that would be perfectly fine, but... Oh, that's bad. Okay, so we do not want to do that. So instead, we're slap slapping. Get slapped. <laughs> yeah, so Parish Song apparently is a kind of trash move uh, in a solo run. I don't know, I'm gonna have to read up and see if there are any exploits or any tricks to making it knock out your opponent, but knock, not knock yourself out. Um, but yeah, otherwise that's just terrible. <laughs> we, we don't want that. I'd rather have submission. Okay, so we are in Faulkner's Gym, Tale of the Tape. We've got a level 7 Politoed, 31 HP. We're a mono water type this time. Water Gun, Hypnosis, Double Slap, and Parish Song, which we just learned Parish Song is kind of trash for a solo run. And uh, then we've got 17 Attack, 17 Defense, 19 Special Attack, which matters because we're probably going to use Water Gun here. We've got 21 Special Defense, 17 Speed. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the Honest Abe fight. Let's see how it goes. So here, Honest Abe number one. Uh, I'm going in without a berry even. We're just going to Hypnosis here, and now go into our Water Gun spam. And I think we're already good enough to win now. Turns out to be a 4-hit KO yet again, but easy win. Easy, easy win. We get to level 8. Perfect. Now let's save the game, and let's go ahead and fight this guy. And, ooh, rip, I didn't even heal. Okay, that's fine. Water Gun is going to just 2-hit on the Pidgey. And here we can just go back and do our water guns. I mean, God Rod, come on, dude. <laughs> He's got nothing on us. So here I'm just going to pop a potion just to be safe, just to have all the HP that I can. Save the game. And uh, here, I mean, we've got 38 HP at level 9. We've, we've got water gun, hypnosis, double slap, perish song still. Our stats are now up to 21 attack, 21 defense, 24 special attack, 25 special defense, and 20 speed. We should outspeed everything. We've got decent, decent special attack to go with our, our water gun. So let's just see. Let's just see how this goes. I'm going to go in without a berry first. All right. So there is Faulkner. Let's go. We get to the Pidgey out. I'm going to try to put this Pidgey to sleep. I think this is just the safe bet. It missed a tackle. It's a two hit KO there on the Pidgey. Okay, so now Pidgeotto comes out. We're going to go Hypnosis. We put it to sleep, perfect. Now I think we just Water Gun. 
Oh yeah, three water guns is going to take this one down. Easy win. What that means is that we have now beaten Faulkner with the first two Pokemon. They Neither was hard, <laughs> you know? Like you might have thought, oh, Poliwrath with a weakness to flying would be hard. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Very, very easy. And uh, yeah, now we have to think about Politoed going forward though. And my worry is that this Pokemon, I mean, that Parish Song is pretty bad. It looks like it has a decent set of TM moves, but some of those I know are post game, like uh, Earthquake. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to see if we can actually get a set that's good enough to beat anything. Because the only other move we learn is Swagger at level 51. <laughs> so uh, we're not getting any level up moves in the rest of this run. So yeah, I'm going to study up on Paris Song, but I think this Pokemon's actually going to underperform. Polyrath is my guess because of its worst move set. That's my that's my prediction anyhow. So uh, here, let's save the game and now it's time to move on to Poliwhirl. The mid stage in Gen One, Poliwhirl is just an absolute beast because of the fact that it it gets amnesia, it gets hypnosis, learns all the level up moves which Polyrath doesn't, and that just made it god tier. But amnesia isn't the same in Gen Two, and uh, yeah. We're just gonna have to see if this Pokemon gets wrecked. <laughs> so Mama, she's gonna give us that Poke Gear. She's like, you're a real Pokemon master now. Get out there with this Poke Gear. You don't even have a Pokemon, come on. <laughs> someday, someday I'll have a Pokemon. That's what my tr trainer is clearly thinking. <laughs> All right, so here we can go ahead and get our Poliwhirl in the same slot as before. And Poliwhirl starts off with Bubble, Hypnosis, and Water Gun. Now, Hypnosis, I think, makes this possible because we can just put our rival's Chikorita to sleep and then just go some Water Guns on it. And it's always worth noting that all of these runs are on max DVs. So even when we have one that fails but looks really, really close, you got to keep in mind that we are playing the strongest version of that Pokemon. So if you had randomly generated DVs or, you know, the slight variations in stats that happen at the beginning of the game and you just got a bad luck roll on them, you might find these runs, even if we get through just barely with a certain Pokemon, you might find it to be completely impossible if you didn't have the max DVs, if you didn't have the best possible stats for the Pokemon. So it's just important to keep in mind, especially with a Pokemon like this, where a move like Water Gun is going to be resisted by Rival 1, and this fight might just become a nightmare if you don't have max DVs. We're going to try it here, though, so let's get into the Rival 1 fight. Strategy here, I think, is pretty simple. We are going Hypnosis first and trying to put this one to sleep. Now we can use Water Gun as long as it stays asleep. And then once it wakes up, we're just going to have to try to put it back to sleep again. And as long as we can keep it to sleep for most of the fight, we have a berry on. Um, I think this is the key. Like sleep can last up to seven turns, which is already pretty darn broken. <laughs> like, sure, he can hit me on the turn that he wakes up, but it's really like, you know, <laughs> we can just see. We're going to get through this fight. No way, no chance we lose this fight here. Poliwag is going to be a lot harder. A lot harder. Because of the fact that it's going to... Uh, it's going to have to just use Bubble. And that's going to be just trash. Bubble's only 20 base power. Plus it has weaker stats than Poliwhirl. That's, that's going to be rough. Alright, so here we deliver the mystery egg. Professor Elm, he's like... Eggs! Oh my god! Speaking of eggs, on the main channel, we are planning a collaboration with Exceptional. If you don't know him, Gen 3 Runner. We're going to be doing a cross-gen versus race with a very egg-exceptional Pokemon, Exeggutor. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and fight this youngster here. Oh, I won water gun in the top slot. I don't want to use bubble. Bubble is trash. Trash. 
and look at even water gun not not doing that much we're gonna win this one but our water gun is a lot weaker than polytoad or you know polyrath even i think all right so let's save the game here we are at faulkner's gym let's check the tail of the tape here we've got a level 7 polywhirl with 28 hp our moveset is water gun hypnosis and bubble i mean bubble and water gun are basically redundant bubbles just weaker so we're gonna go water gun the whole way i think we have 16 in attack, 16 in defense, 14 special attack, 14 special defense, 19 in speed. The main issue here is the fact that our special attack is so low relative to our other stats. Like the the Polyrath and the Politoed were like 20 in that stat and we're only 14. So this could be bad, but let's just see. Let's save the game. Let's go into the Honest Abe fight. I'm going in first without a berry. I'm going to just try to see we outspeed here. We put that Spiro to sleep, but look how weak that water gun is. <laughs> I still think we win because we have no weaknesses here on like Polyrath. But yeah, we can see we're hitting a lot weaker here. All right, so now we're to Faulkner. Let's check the stats. We've leveled up to level nine. We've got 33 HP, of course. Same moveset as before, but now 19 attack, 19 defense, 16 special attack, 16 special defense, 24 speed. We're faster than our evolved forms. That's nice. We will outspeed everything. The question is, how are we going to do with this much weaker special attack? We're only at 16. All of our moves are special attacks here. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so Faulkner time. So... I'm going to try to put this Pidgey to sleep. Okay, we're getting tackled. <laughs> and Hypnosis is missing every single turn. Which is kind of standard. That's that's kind of how Hypnosis works, you know? It's the reason most people don't believe in Hypnosis. Because uh, it, it doesn't work most of the time. <laughs> Alright, so we level up to level 10 there. We put the Pidgeotto to sleep on the first attempt though. So uh, Pidgeotto does believe in Hypnosis. And here, Water Gun is looking like a four hit KO. So I believe we've already won at this point. Yeah, yeah, Gus does nothing. So there we go. Poliwhirl easily gets through Faulkner. We add it to the winner's column. And man, oh man, that was, that was legit. That was nice. So here we have leveled up to level 11, 39 HP. Attack is 23, defense 23, 19 in both specials, 28 in speed. We're going to outspeed a lot of things here. The real question is just how are we going to do in future sections? I think that hypnosis always gives us a chance in every fight. If we're not getting one hit KO'd, we can just put things to sleep. And water gun can at least hit ghosts. And let's just see, we're going to get Double Slap at level 19. I'm not sure if we'll get there before Rival 2 or not, but that should be a move that helps us in that section. We're going to get Body Slam later on. Rain Dance, I believe, charges up our water moves, so that's pretty legit. Yeah, we're just going to have to see how this one goes, but I think Hypnosis keeps it in the mix for quite a while. Add on the TM moves that are flashing up on screen right now. I mean, I don't know when we get all of these TMs is the key point. But man, if we can get moves like Ice Punch, I think we're going to be pretty good. So let's just save the game and it's time to move on to Poliwag. Let's see how this, this little tadpole goes. Oh, look at the Hypno right there telling us use Hypnosis, buddy. Use Hypnosis. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't plan these things. They just happen. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate Pokemon Randomizer is like, I already have the strategy advice for you, buddy. <laughs> I swear, Gen 2 just has the most wordy intro of any Pokemon game. But there we go. There is our little Poliwag. Look at him. Okay. So here. Let's get into this. Oh, we start with only Bubble. Oh, God. No hypnosis. Oh, I think this gets us wrecked. Like the best strategy with this Pokemon, I think would literally be to use up all of our PP and then go into the rival fight with struggle. 
Oh God. I did struggle strats with like some of the babies and with uh, Jigglypuff. But in those cases, right, they had non-damaging moves, meaning you could just go find a random wild Pokemon, never knock them out, just use up all your PP. Here we have a damage dealing move, which means it would be much more complicated. We would have to find a wild Pokemon, but then not knock it out and just repeat that over and over again and use a bunch of potions. I'm not sure that's the way we want to go. We're going to try rival one as is. Let's just see. So here we go. Bubble. <laughs> that did like nothing. Literally one damage. And he growls at me. <laughs> Legend. He's like, I growl at you for using bubbles on me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is not looking possible to beat the rival with a polywrap. Um, we can technically lose that fight, though. Let's just see if we lose that fight. We still have to get to level seven here. Okay, so let's fight this guy, Mikey Mikey. We have no choice. We just have to use bubble repeatedly and hope to win. <laughs> so here the rat comes out. Oh, look how little damage this does even to Rattata. Oh God, are we gonna get beaten by youngster Mikey? We did, <laughs> God. Okay, so there's another strategy, of course, that's terrible, but it involves turning on wild Pokemon. But here's a wild Pidgey, right? And we can go bubble and bubble. The key point here is that we can't knock enemy Pokemon out because that would get XP and we don't want XP. Okay, but here's the final Pidgey. We bubble and now we run away. Okay, so now we've got this Poliwag set such that it can use struggle. Oops. We're going to give a berry again. Okay, so let's save the game and let's fight the rival one more time with struggle strats here. Okay, so rival one attempt 1B. And look at this struggle not looking very good. <laughs> we're, we're losing HP and we're not doing that much damage. Yeah, we get wrecked. <laughs> like struggle strats. They were supposed to be good, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going for this again. We get another growl there. And maybe without the crit, maybe we would have had more health. Yeah, this is going to get through this time as long as it doesn't crit and you even missed for us. So there we go. We finally managed to win a fight <laughs> with that Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, we may have to go struggle strats to even have a shot on a lot of opponents in the early game because Bubble is just that bad. Now, don't get me wrong. We'll get to level seven against the youngster. And I think that will be fine because at level seven, we will be able to in theory at least get hypnosis and start start beating things so this is where we have to ask the question i have to ask you guys what your thoughts are on this for me this is no longer a minimum battles run because i'm using damage dealing moves on my opponents and i'm still on minimal experience like i haven't gained any additional experience but then people always get into the well you have to lose rival one then but we just saw losing rival one, not good. <laughs> we get wrecked by this guy even, this youngster even. But here we're one level higher, so let's just see how this goes. Bubble, oh, look at how much more damage Bubble does here with one additional level. <laughs> this is this is like night and day, this fight. Still think it's a four hit KO here on the Rattata, but that was a lot more damage, a lot more. And we learn Hypnosis, so I think that's just mandatory. I don't think we were getting through Honest Abe, even if we got through that Rattata with, you know, the losing to Rival 1, we would get to Honest Abe and not have access to Hypnosis, and I think that's just GG game over. 
but I, I gotta know what you guys think. All right, so tail of the tape as we enter Falconer's Gym, we've got a level seven polywag, 24 HP. We have now learned hypnosis, so bubble and hypnosis going into Honest Abe. We have 14 attack, 12 defense, 12 special attack, 12 special defense, 19 in speed. We are fairly fast for a little tadpole. Uh, he's a fast swimmer, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's fight Honest Abe here. Let's see how this goes. I think we lead off with hypnosis. We do outspeed here. That is a huge advantage. And now we're bubbling, but now we definitely need this one to stay asleep and it wakes up and we get wrecked. We need a berry here, <laughs> clearly. So I'm gonna give the berry. Let's save and let's go ahead and fight this one again. So obviously we need hypnosis at the beginning of the fight. If we get a speed drop, we're just guaranteed to outspeed every turn here. We put this one back to sleep, but we're going to need some good sleep blocks, some nice long sleeps plus, you know, hypnosis hitting when we use it. Okay. There we've healed. We put him back to sleep. We did have to use the berry there. And here, all right, so we do get through Spiro there. We level up to level eight. Nice, nice. Let's check our stats going into Faulkner. We are at level nine, 29 HP now. I mean, bubble and hypnosis don't change. We've got 17 attack, 15 defense, 15 special attack, 15 special defense, 21 in speed. I mean, this Pokemon's about attack and speed, and yet we've only got bubble. <laughs> this is kind of terrible. But we do know Hypnosis, so I guess that's something. Let's try. All right, Faulkner. You you need to go sleepy sleep, okay? How about some sleepy sleep? I do outspeed. So I can put this Pokemon to sleep and now go into the bubbles. Get a critical hit at the beginning. But this is still a four hitter here, I think. Even with the crit. Okay, but we knock Pidgey out. Nice. We level up to level 10. That's a damage rounding threshold. Now we need to put this Pidgeotto to sleep. Okay. And look how little damage Bubble does. Oh god, we've only got five bubbles left, too. I think we have enough. I think we get through. Okay. Oh, critical hit. And Bubble. Oh, there we go. Poliwag <laughs> gets through Faulkner. Oh, it's just because of the hypnosis, though. And the, the thing is, like, I just need you guys to tell me. Tell me your opinions on this one. Is it okay to use up our PP without gaining experience against wild Pokemon and then go struggle strats? I've made my cases. I say in the case of Jigglypuff, yes, it's perfectly fine. In this case, I think the answer is pretty borderline. <laughs> Honestly, and in the case of basically anything stronger than this, I would argue no, right? Like, let's let's just think about this for a second here. When you're talking about struggle strats, struggle is a 50 base power typeless move in Gen 2. I believe it's still 50 base power, but if we just allow struggle strats in every single spot, well, then we could quickly devolve into like Pokemon that have like four moves trying to use up all of the PP and all of their moves so that they can get to struggle, which seems kind of cheap to me. You know, it's also a bypass for Pokemon that can't hit ghosts, you know, I don't know. In this case, with one move that's incredibly weak that we can easily manage to not knock out any wild Pokemon, I think it just barely makes sense. But in any other case, yeah, I'm kind of against it, guys. But, you know, this is the reason why there's a comment section for you guys to tell me. <laughs> you know, ultimately, I, I will make the decision. But I think we can kind of put an asterisk on Poliwag because it has to use Struggle in order to get through Rival 1. And without beating Rival 1, it's not going to get enough XP in order to get to Hypnosis before Honest Abe. And we saw Honest Abe was just crushing with the amount of damage that it was doing. And if we were one level lower, there's there's zero chance we get through that fight, even with, you know, a Baryon and everything, that's just not gonna work. So yeah, 
That's my opinion on it. In the next section, I mean, we don't have to fight really anything other than rockets and, you know, Bugsy's Gym and Rival 2. I think hypnosis is enough to get through all of those. All right, so with Poliwag done, it's time to look back and see things are getting a little cramped here because we have gotten too many Pokemon through Faulkner. We are now to the point where we have beaten him with 62 Pokemon. We're up to four lines now. We're going to have to resize these sprites and put more per line <laughs> in order to keep this going. Oh, this is stupid. But hey, 62 have passed. Only 35 have failed. It's time to go to the Alakazam line now. Let's see how this one goes here. Then we're going to match up the Machamp line versus, versus the Jump Luff line. Since they're both weak to flying, we're just going to see how those two go. Apum's going to be all on its own, of course, because it's uh, its own kind of Pokemon. So let's get into the Alakazam line. Professor Elm, give me, give me that Alakazam, buddy. So I've said already that I'm basically just, when I don't know what is weak, I'm just using you know, Cyndaquil's ball to replace and going up against Totodile, Totodile, blah. Some people have been, of course, arguing in the comments that it should be up against Chikorita. They think that Bayleaf is tougher on Rival 2. We'll see. You know, we, we could repeat a lot of these results, I think. I don't think Alakazam would struggle with either, assuming it has at least one attacking move here. So here, yes, we start with Confusion. Perfect. I think that's all we need. Honestly, I think that is all that we need. Now, the other reason why I choose Totodile here is because strong physical attacks. We've got low low defense, but really high special. So I think this is a spot where, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Rival one. And I am going to swap Confusion into the top slot. Let's just go Confusion. Oh yeah, look at the damage. Oh, that's an easy two-hit KO. And we are in the medium slow level up group, so we level up right there in that fight. No problem at all. Where this police officer, he's like, you know, where's Officer Jenny? Come on. What do you mean there's this this guy? <laughs> Come on. Clearly they didn't think this through. You know, Nurse Joy, Officer Jenny. We need the real Pokemon cast, not this not this nameless police officer nonsense come on game freak get your stuff together <laughs> so alakazam has reached faulkner's gym let's see the current situation no we don't want to teleport sorry uh we are at level seven we've got 26 hp so not great on the hp front but we do have confusion kinesis which of course lowers accuracy and teleport which is useless in battle for us and uh we have 14 attack 13 defense but that 26 special attack is what it's all about. 19 special defense. We've got 24 in speed. So we are very weak against physical moves, but we can pack a absolute wallop with our stab psychic moves. So let's see how we do against Honest Abe here. First one, no berry. We're just going in. We're just trying to confusion this one down. And uh, yeah, you can do decent damage with Peck, it doesn't matter. Three hit KO, Alakazam destroys. And now Confusion is a one shot. So yeah, he's back to being Rodney Dangerfield. No respect at all from me. And here, I don't even think we need a berry against Faulkner. Let's get into this. So the Faulkner fight with our Alakazam, we're now up to level nine. We have 31 HP, same move set, 17 attack, 16 defense, 32 special attack that is ridiculous 23 special defense and 29 in speed we're gonna outspeed everything and hit really hard let's do this let's just destroy him no berry who needs a berry come on real pokemon don't need berries probably maybe <laughs> so here confusion one shots the pidgey nice we level up to level 10 pidgeotto comes out and uh, this is looking like a two hitter Easy, easy game. And so, uh, yeah, Alakazam is now level 11. It has crushed the first section of the game with no problems. Kind of expected, I mean, come on. The only 
time that this Pokemon doesn't beat the first gym easily is in Pokemon Yellow, where they decided for some reason to not give it attacking moves at level 5. So it starts off with Teleport and uh, Kinesis. And that led to the whole thing. I've, I've got a short on my channel or on my main channel, RBY Pokemon Challenges, of me getting beat up by Caterpies with my Alakazam because it just couldn't do enough damage with Struggle. Oh, it was stupid. But yeah, in Pokemon Gold and Silver and this version, Crystal, we're clearly crushing. Clearly crushing. I think we're strong enough that we'll be able to get through Bugsy, honestly. Um, I don't think Scyther is going to be able to resist enough of our damage. We're going to destroy the rockets. And then when we get to Rival 2, Ghastly and Zubat are just going down easily. So it's really just about the fur uh, or the Croconaw, sorry. And Croconaw is going to do decent physical damage, but I think we'll be able to tank it and win. So, yeah. That does it for Alakazam. Let's get to the Kadabra up now. So let's see how Kadabra is going. Same moveset. Okay. So here we don't need to give a nickname. We can just move on. And Kadabra, I think, is fine here. I think its stats aren't really that far off of Alakazam's, honestly. And I think that's going to allow us to get through some spots. Now, there are going to be some spots, I think, where... Gen 2 is going to completely wreck Pokemon, but this is one where it's definitely better than my Pokemon Yellow series because yet again, Kadabra in Pokemon Yellow starts with only Kinesis and Teleport, so it gets eliminated before Brock. It can't, it can't do anything. You got to remember, Gen 1, Struggle is a normal type move, which means Rock types resist Struggle, so Struggle strats against Brock are terrible. Here, on the other hand, Struggle is a typeless move, which means even ghosts can be hit by Struggle, and there's no resistance to it. That is what makes it possible, I think, to get through even opponents like um, Rival 2, or I think, is it Morty? With the uh, Psychic or the Ghost types in this version, if I recall correctly. Somebody's going to be like, you called the wrong gym leader. It's clearly Chuck that has him. <laughs> so here, let's go ahead and save the game. We have gotten rid of our berry. We're just going to try to beat Rival 1 as we are. Let's see how this goes here. So Rival attempt number one. First things first, we're going to put Confusion in the top slot. Confusion. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, look at the two hit KO. Easy, easy game. So uh, yeah, Rival 1, no problem. I think we're still gonna wreck Youngster Mikey too. And uh, Falkner's gym is just gonna be a joke. That's my prediction. Okay, so here we are. We have made it to Falkner's gym with Kadabra. Let's check this. We are at level seven, we got 24 HP. Same moveset as, Kad or as Alakazam. And we have 12 attack, 11 defense, 24 special attack, 17 special defense, 22 speed. We're still going to outspeed everything. We still have a really high special. We're just not quite as good. We're less bulky than Alakazam. So let's see how Honest Abe goes. Here, the strategy is uh, just use confusion, I think. Okay, Peck doesn't do that much. Yeah, we get through. Look at that. Easy, easy game. Let's check the stats. We're now level 9, 29 HP, same moveset, 14 attack, 13 defense. The 13 defense is the scary part, but now we're up to 29 special attack, 20 special defense, 26 speed. We're looking a lot like Alakazam when it came into the gym. So uh, yeah, I think we'll be fine. Let's go ahead and take on Wagner. Here, I think we just hold down the A button. Let's just see. So here, Confusion. Is not quite a one hitter, but it is a two hit KO there. We're gonna outspeed here on Pidgeotto. Confusion takes it below half, and one more confusion ends it. Yeah, we didn't even get to yellow health. <laughs> come on, come on, Faulkner. But yeah, this is another case though where we do have to keep in mind that if, and I, I just mean this very strongly, if we run into a wall with Alakazam. At any point, we would expect Kadabra to run into the same wall. I don't see that happening. Maybe Whitney could be hard for these Pokemon. I mean, 
strong physical moves, you know, rollout, if it builds up, could could wreck us, possibly. But then we have Kinesis strats, so we can lower her accuracy to try to get her to miss and break break the rollout. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to see. I think these Pokemon are gonna be pretty good. Kadabra, Alakazam. But now we gotta get to the worst one. <laughs> it's time to do the Abra run. So let's save the game here. Let's see if Abra, if Abra has anything for us. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be bad. I mean, we're clearly going to have to go with some struggle strats here. Like, that's the only way through, right? So here, Professor Elm, he does his whole thing. Let's see. Oh, yep, there's the Abra. And it comes in with only teleport. Yep. So I'm just going to go through my standard route. But this is another Pokemon where we don't actually have to damage opponents with our move as we're using up PP. So this seems a lot more legit to me as far as a minimum battles run using struggle just on that basis. And then we're going to get a berry. So we will be able to at least um, heal up in battle. Well, let's try rival one. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> great. I say here, let's just see Totodile comes out. Struggle does that much. <laughs> oh man. Look how much damage the single scratch did. Oh God. We get wrecked. <laughs> and this is the point. Like you could be like, well, but you could just lose the rival one fight. Yes. Yes, I can. But then are we getting through honest, Abe? If we can't beat a level five Totodile, are we getting through Honest Abe? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. It's using 100% accurate peck. I mean, we'll do it. We'll try it. Clearly, the rival one fight is impossible. Even if he didn't leer there at the beginning, the scratches are just going to destroy us. So, no, no debate or discussion there. All right, so let's check the tail of the tape for Abra coming in here. We've got 20 HP at level six because we lost the rival one fight. There was no way to get through it. Totodile, 100% accurate scratch. We never get through that fight. Chikorita, Cyndaquil, maybe we can get through with enough misses, enough um, turns of them getting that 5% chance to miss with tackle. But that's the reason why I think Totodile is actually harder, at least in the very early game. Here we have 9 attack, 8 defense, 19 special attack, 13 special defense, 17 speed. I think we're outsped by the Spiro, and I think we're getting wrecked. Let's just see. Let's just see. So here we're up against Spiro. I'm going to get pecked and lose more than half of my health. <laughs> that did 12 damage. And so we heal up. Uh, look at that. We're up to 17 HP. And uh, here, this is looking like a five hit KO probably on the Spiro, which means even with crits, we don't have it down to half health with two hits. Even with critical hits, we're never taking this one down on minimum battles. Okay. And rival one doesn't work. So, you know, I use the berry. It, it doesn't matter. He does way too much damage from the beginning. So that means that Abra is our first Pokemon eliminated. I don't think anybody's surprised by this. <laughs> I mean, come on. Struggle strats with an Abra. We, we would never expect this Pokemon to be able to get through. All right, so now that we've finished the Abra section, here's where we stand. Abra joins the losers column, so we've got 36 Pokemon that have failed, but Alakazam and Kadabra both are able to get through. So we've got 64 Pokemon through. We've got 36 not through. We finished 100 Pokemon at this point. And uh, yeah, the the disparity is pretty clear. Most Pokemon are beating Faulkner on minimum battles with Max DV's mind. There are some of these that are very close. There are some that we're very close to lose. But the only thing that we got to keep in mind is that because we're running on Max DV's, there are going to be a lot of situations where the Pokemon that lose, right, even if you think they're really close or somebody's coming in saying, I was able to, to get this to go, don't get me wrong. We'll go back, we'll test some of the close cases, but things like Cyndaquil, things like Venusaur, things like uh, Vulpix, some people have been giving me ideas for Vulpix uh, optimizations. 
They may be possible, but keep in mind that this would still be with max TVs, which means most of the time it ain't gonna work out, right? It's just not gonna work out most of the time. So on that basis, we'll, we'll still try them. We'll still give them another shot, but just understand that even if we do get through, we're still saying that those Pokemon are so impractical to get through that you'd be better off just go and fight the Sprout Tower, get some extra levels, come back. You're probably doing a lot better. Probably doing a lot better at that point. Anyway, that's done. And now it's time to compare. We're going to do Machamp up against Jump Bluff <laughs> just to see. The, the logic is just that both Pokemon are weak against flying. So uh, yeah, let's get this get this rolling here. So I'm gonna test out your guys' theory by going up against the... I've set this to go up against the Chikorita line. Machamp does have a lower special, so I think it makes sense. But yeah, here we're starting with Low Kick, Leer, and Focus Energy. Mm -hmm. So Rival 1, first attempt. I think I'm gonna go Focus Energy. Get pumped. Let's give him a Leer. And now, oh, we missed the Low Kick. Oh, we missed the Low Kick again. Oh, but now that Low Kick's doing the damage. Yes, get wrecked. This is my champ. He, he ain't scared of no Chikorita, come on. Bayleaf, you're gonna get kicked. Kicked in the face, clearly. That's how Machamp rolls. It's always kicking everybody in the face. All right, so the tail of the tape, Machamp, oh. Oh, look at that. Look at that animation. Oh, he's a beast. So we're coming in here. We are at level seven. We've got 31 HP. We are a fighting type, which of course means we're at a disadvantage here against Falconer's Gym. We have a berry, low kick, leer, focus energy. Focus energy raises the chance of critical hits. And then we've got 25 attack, 18 defense, 16 special attack, 19 special defense. We've got 15 in speed, so we're not out speeding yet. But let's see how we do against Honest Abe with the Baryon. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to try to just go all in on attack first. Here, the berry oh, doesn't even activate because it was a two hit KO, come on. <laughs> but champ, he's like, I am here. I'm here to wreck these guys. All right, so now we can get to Rodney Dangerfield. He's, he's fine. Rod, Rodney. His mother calls him Rodney. <laughs> okay, we level up to level 9. Here, low kick. Still not quite one-shotting on the Pidgey, but not too scary. Here, we can save the game. And uh, let's go ahead and throw a potion on. Just get to full health. And save the game again, because we can. Let's check. As we go into Faulkner, we're now up to level 9. We've got 38 HP. Same moveset as before, but now we've got 31 in attack. That's massive. We've got 22 defense, 19 special attack, 23 special defense, 17 speed. We're not going to outspeed the Pidgeot I, or the Pidgeotto. Sorry, I don't think. But um, yeah, let's just see. Let's see how this goes. Faulkner, I'm going to kick your birds. <laughs> I'm going to punt your birds, basically, with my low kick. So here, low kick is a two hit KO on the first Pidgey. Nice. And now he sends out Pidgeotto and we critical hit one shot. <laughs> get wrecked. Oh, get wrecked by Machamp. He doesn't care. He's here. He's here to, to wreck your Pokemon. So there we go. A level 11 Machamp destroys Falconer. We've got 44 HP. I think low kick is going to be much worse in the next gym. And I'm not sure if we learn anything else between now and then. Hmm. Because we don't get swift. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. So. Yeah. The next section might be kind of hard. We learn mud slap, but that doesn't help us against the. Whatchamacall? The. The Scyther. Oh god, this might be a Pokemon that we have to try to manipulate things to get to struggle. 
so that we can struggle on the bug gym. Oh god. <laughs> and the rockets are going to be kind of hard too because they're all poison types. You know, those Zubats, they ain't going to be taking a lot of damage. Ooh, this could be scary. All right, well, for now, <laughs> Machamp is a champion. Let's check out a jump bluff. So here we go. Jump bluff, we can pick it up right there. We've replaced Chikorita with the ultimate Pokemon randomizer, of course. And we're going to be up against the Cyndaquil. And uh, what's our move set here? We have Splash, Synthesis, Tail Whip, and Tackle. Now, I'm not sure. Splash obviously does nothing. Tail Whip lowers defense. Tackle is our attacking move. I think synthesis, synthesis recovers HP. Is that right? Let's let's test this out. I, I've got to learn some stuff here. <laughs> this is going to be a study study sesh for uh, RBY Pokemon challenges coming over here to become GSC Pokemon challenges. I'm going to test all this out though. So here, let's go ahead and get down to rival number one. I'm going to take the berry off because I think we just go synthesis instead. But let's just see. Okay. So first things first, let's get into this fight here. Where I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a Tail Whip. Okay, we get a couple of defense drops there. Let's get one more. Here we can now Synthesis to recover HP. Nice. And to do... I'm going to go even harder on the... Uh, whatchamacalls? Okay, so th synthesis allows us, I think, to recover half of our health. So now that we've gotten its defense down nice and low, we can tackle. Cool. Alright, so Jump Luff takes down Rival 1 without too much difficulty. We gotta keep in mind, too, that a berry will allow us to heal one time without having to use synthesis, and that could be very useful here. So, all right, here we go. We have made it to Faulkner's gym. Let's save the game. Oh, my name is Tail question mark. What? <laughs> I just realized that. Okay, we have a level seven jump love here. We have 29 HP. We are grass flying Pokemon. We have tackle, synthesis, tail whip, and splash as our move set. And we have 15 in attack, 17 defense, 14 special attack, 19 special defense, 22 in speed. So I do think we outspeed here, but this is a spot where I am giving a berry. I think this is required no matter what. And we got to take on Honest Abe and see if he keeps us honest here. Let's find out. Okay, so first things first, we should outspeed here. So I'm going to start off with some tail whips. Okay, and Peck did about 12 damage there, but now we get a heal up. I'm going to set up another Tail Whip here. Now I'm going to Synthesis to kind of heal up here. Here, we're kind of getting back up towards full health. Okay. But that doesn't really do that much for us, does it? Okay. So clearly that didn't work. Let's try again. And this one, we're not going to go quite as hard on the tail whips. Um, like, I still think we need at least one or two. Okay, that was bad. Here, we'll synthesis back up to full health. Okay, critical hit there. So now synthesis. Synthesis. Like, he can never miss, obviously. And he's doing more than half of our health there. Okay. The other things to keep in mind are maybe we get a range somewhere. I don't think there's any chance of winning here. So let's just reset again. I mean, we're realistically more like 35 resets so far, actually. Synthesis just to get ourselves the two hits that we need here. Oh, and there's the crit, and there we take him down. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, we need a crit, one tail whip, and then we have to get him in a range where he can't just knock us out. In one more turn, we gotta have two more turns, and then we can get the crit, and we can win. Thanks to being faster, that was the key. So, uh, yeah. Is that going to be good? Not really. 
Okay, so we have in fact made it to Faulkner with Jump Luff. Let's check the stats here. We are level 9. We've got 35 HP. Here, I mean our moveset, tackle, synthesis, tail whip, and splash. I think we're going to use tail whip and synthesis to get the Pidgey into a decent range, knock it out, but make sure that we're pretty much healed up before we move on to the, uh, whatchamacall, the Pidgeotto. We're going to need the berry for the Pidgeotto, and then I think we're checking tail whip ranges and, and tackle ranges after tail whip, basically. We have uh, 17 attack, 20 defense, 17 special attack, 23 special defense, 27 in speed. So we are nice and fast, but man, this is probably not going to be an easy fight. <laughs> I'm just going to say that now. All right, so let's see how Faulkner goes here. Okay, so first Pokemon out. There it is. So I'm going to go Tail Whip first. Okay, he's just tackling. He's only doing three damage per hit here. This is perfectly fine. Okay. So here, I'm going to tackle once there. Cool. Now, synthesis to get our health up nice and high. Now, we'll tackle it down. Cool. Level up to level 10. Now, I'm going to tail whip here on Pidgeotto. Um, I'm going to synthesis here. Let's see. Because that does 12 damage. So, in theory... We can out heal his damage. Okay, so we're gonna bury there. I'm just gonna tackle there. Let's synthesis again. So yeah, we can out heal the damage from this Pidgeotto, which I think means that, okay, we're on one HP, but oh yes, Jump Luff beats Faulkner on the first attempt. <laughs> I mean, Honest Abe is always the real wall here. Um, it's very rare you get to Faulkner and he's hard compared to Honest Abe, but you know. <laughs> so here, Jump Luff, level 11. We finished with 41 HP. It was very close, but the fact that at level 11 with max DVs, keep in mind, this is the strongest possible Jump Luff. We were able to out heal the damage from Pidgeotto, which made that pretty trivial as long as he's not getting critical hits on us yeah <laughs> so we were able to get through that and now we've got tackle synthesis tail whip and splash going into the next section and we've got 20 attack 24 defense 20 special attack 27 special defense 33 speed i think we might have a shot in this next section just because we can heal in battle the issue is going to be that we don't have anything to hit ghosts at this point. And these results make me think that Skip Loom is just going to get wrecked. I don't think it's going to have the stats to get through. But we'll find out. We'll find out. Right? Normally it takes level 10 just to get tackle for this evolutionary line. So, yeah. Anyway, before that, let's go and check on Machoke. Let's see how Machoke does. Chokey boy. Now, I think Machoke is basically going to be like Machamp. I'm pretty sure it has the same moveset or a very similar moveset. I mean, if we've got the low kick, focus, energy, leer, we're just going to have lower stats. That's the only difference. Might still work out. So let's just see. Let's just see. So in this one, I've replaced Totodile with Machoke. Uh, we're going to put it up against the Chikorita line. We're going to see if that makes any difference as we go through. But yeah, we have exactly the same moveset as we just had with Machamp a little bit ago. And I think that's pretty good. I think that's going to enable us to get through some fights. Right. So first things first here, um, we're up against this Chikorita here. I'm going to focus my energy. <laughs> and now let's leer at it. Now let's kick this one and let's kick it again <laughs> and let's kick it a third time. Oh, he gets a critical hit. Oh no, low kick is missing. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> no problem, no problem. We get to level six. And uh, yeah, we're doing just fine in this section. Medium slow level up group, so we're going to get levels pretty quickly here in the early game. Okay, yes, we did hear his name, but we're not going to tell you that. Officer, we ain't no snitches. Come on. <laughs> They're like, what is the name of the kid? Question marks. <laughs> hey, he told me that even he didn't know his name. I'm sorry, officer. 
Oh man, the world of Pokemon, it's completely broken. So mama's a call-in, we can just say, yep, thanks mom. Thanks mom, keep my money. You know, she, she wants us to save it. She wants us to invest it, you know, in the S&P 500 or something. You know, don't don't go blow it and all on, you know, potions. You know, be out here drinking potions like crazy. <laughs> okay, we have made it to Faulkner's Gym with this Machoke. And let's just see how this is actually looking here. So we are at level 7. We have 30 HP, low kick, leer, focus energy. We're coming in with 21 attack, 17 defense, 14 special attack, 15 special defense, and 13 speed. I'm going to give a berry here uh, because Honest Abe, kind of scary. Just just going to say that honestly now. Uh, he's, he scares me a little with this Pokemon, but I think we have a chance. So let's just find out. Okay, so uh, first, first things first. I think I focus my energy. Yes, I focus all the energy and now I kick you. Oh no, we missed. <laughs> and that did not do enough damage. Okay. So I think we just go all in on the low kicks and hope that we deal enough damage. I think that's the play. So here, low kick. Okay, we missed the low kick there. And clearly we either need the critical hit or we need to not miss any low kicks. I mean, the move is 90% accurate. So hitting three in a row shouldn't be that big of a deal. You know, get the critical hit and knock him out. Clearly a crit is going to be enough with one more hit in order to knock him out. Okay, we heal there. And there we land low kick. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, Honest Abe, I mean, he is keeping us honest. He's he's not making it easy to get through that fight, but that's, that's also not hard. So, okay. Now we can move on to this guy. Good old Rodney Dangerfield. Roddy. Roddy, Roddy. Come on. So I think we just keep kicking birds, uh, apparently. Like, we can just punt these birds <laughs> all across the gym. Like, I just imagine this this uh, Machoke in here just punting birds all over. <laughs> Faulkner's like, no, stop kicking my birds. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your birds shouldn't have been in kicking range. <laughs> all right, so uh, here we go. We can save the game right here. We've made it to Faulkner with... Our Machoke. Let's check the stats. Ooh, look, look at that. Ooh. He's got the little the little peck jiggle going on. What is this? <laughs> the fact that the pecks are jiggling. Oh man, that just looks so wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that just cracks me up too much. Alright, we are at level 9. We've got 36 HP going into this. Low kick, leer, focus energy. We've got 26 attack, 20 defense. We've only got 16 in special attack, 18 in special defense. Fortunately, those don't really matter. The 16 speed is kind of scary. I'm a little nervous about that. I think we need a berry. I'm just going to venture a guess that that is part of the strategy here. And we are going to start to this fight. I think I'm going to focus energy first since the Pidgey doesn't have any ability to use like a, you know gust or anything i think having the higher chance to crit later on could help us out on pidgeotto see gust did decent damage there oh we missed and there we take it down there we go so machoke chokey boy gets through this guy's yoked you know Look at him flexing up there on the top left. My goodness. He's absolutely legendary. So, uh, yeah, Machoke beats Faulkner on minimum battles, beats Brock on minimum battles in Gen 1. I'm not surprised by this Pokemon at all. But, uh, yeah. Level 11 going into the next section with 42 HP. We gain a couple levels in that fight. And we've got 30 attack, 24 defense. The specials don't really matter in this next section. Um... 18 speed we're slow we're slow compared to everything basically the bigger issue is that we don't really have a lot of good moves to deal with the next section since bug and flying are also going to resist fighting we might end up having to uh to mess with some other moves and that's gonna be kind of scary but anyway 
we've made it through this section. That's all we can say for now. And uh, Machoke gets to join the winner's column. So now we'll try Skip Bloom. I don't think this is going to be good. I think Skip Bloom's just going to get wrecked. Professor Elm, he's he's also a chatty Kathy. You know, in fact, I think we should name our mother Kathy because she likes to chat a lot. Um, all right, so we are going to replace, of course, the Chikorita with our Skip Bloom. And we do have Tackle. That is an advantage. We do start out with Tackle here. So I'm going to take away the berry. Let's save the game. Let's try Rival 1. Okay. Skip Bloom, go. I believe in you. So here, let's Tail Whip first. Okay, he leers. I'm going to Tail Whip again. That was a crit that did about half. Here, I'm going to move Tackle into the top slot. Start tackling him. Okay, now we can synthesis up. Okay, and he missed, so we gotta get back to full health, cool. And now we just win. Easy, easy game, easy game. Skip Loom does not care for your rival one. But I do already see a problem. We have less HP, and we're clearly taking more damage there, so... I don't see any, any realistic way that we get this Pokemon through Honest Abe. But it's not that far off, and that's the kind of interesting thing, like... I'm willing to bet that if you just took this Pokemon through Sprout Tower, you would easily be down to Stabe and then have a chance to get through the Faulkner Gym, so... Let's check on the stats of this Skip Bloom right here. We have only 26 HP, which I believe is less than we had before. We got the same moveset as Jump Bluff. But we've only got 13 attack, 14 defense, 13 special attack, 16 special defense, and 18 in speed. Our stats are clearly much lower. And given how close that last fight was, I just don't see this happening. But here, you know, we'll, we'll give it a couple tries. We'll, we'll just give it a couple honest attempts at Abe. So let's see how it goes. So first things first, I'm going to tail whip him. Oh, look at that. That does more than half. And so, yeah, we're going to get like one hit on him. And yeah, <laughs> that ain't working, guys. I'm just telling you now, if we don't tail whip, then even two crits isn't going to knock him out. And even if we do tail whip him, we're only getting one hit before he knocks us out. So this is not a situation that is even possible. Um, You'd need to go gain more levels in order to beat Honest Abe. And I mean, it was pretty obvious already, but this one I think we can just cut off really fast. No need to mess around with it. So with that being said, let's just get straight to the Machop run. See how this goes instead. Okay, so here we have of course replaced Cyndaquil with Machop. Okay, so here we have our Machop. It knows low kick and leer. I think this is fine. I think this will get through, but let's find out. Let's go in here and let's kick a Chikorita around a little bit because we can. Okay, so let's kick it. Still looks like we're getting the ranges here. Yes, easy win with Choppy Boy. Look at him. He's just chopping it up out here. But we just have to remember, we always tell the police that the rival's name is question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, because we're going to handle this in the streets now. We ain't snitches, guys. We're handling this. We're handling the business ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we're, we're going to put him in his place. He's never going to become a Pokemon master. You know, unlike Gen 1, where you end up fighting your rival at the end. Yeah, he's, he's just not good enough. He's just not good enough. We're going to make sure he's not good enough. So here, let's uh, kick some birds. Oh, one hitter. <laughs> and get kicked. Your rat also gets kicked, and we get focus energy there. So we have exactly the same moveset now as Machamp and Machoke. So we are here at level 7. We've got 29 HP. Same moveset as our evolved forms, low kick, leer, and focus energy. We've got 18 attack, 14 defense, 12 special attack, 12 special defense, and 12 speed. So we are obviously a lot weaker than Machoke or Machamp, 
but let's just see how it actually works out in practice here. Okay, so here I'm going to kick this one. He already takes us below half health. So I think we only get two hits. Now the crit there makes me think we can do this though. If we just get one critical hit and then one normal hit, right? So that's the normal hit. And yeah, I mean, we just need one crit and one normal hit. That's all we need. So yeah, we just have to kind of keep going, going, going. This is going to take a ton of attempts, guys. Oh, there's the crit. Yes. Now we need the hit. There we go. We get through Honest Dave and get to level eight. <laughs> oh man, that was beautiful. So here I'm going to heal up. I think I can just kick these Pidgeys. I don't think we even need to worry. So yeah, this guy, Pidgey guy, he, he's been demoted from Rodney Dangerfield back down to Pidgey guy because <laughs> we've got him a chop just kicking him, kicking his birds, get kicked, not even using a berry. Come on. <laughs> that guy is cannon fodder. That guy should have been the first trainer in this gym. Just saying. Okay, so here, let's check the stats as we go up to Faulkner here. We're at level 9 now. We've got 34 HP, same move set, And now 22 attack, 16 defense, 14 in both specials and speed. So we're not going to even outspeed the Pidgey, I don't think. But this is another one that I think just comes down to... You know, we'll probably focus energy on the Pidgey since I don't think it's going to do that much damage. And then we'll just low kick it down and then it comes down to how do we do against the Pidgeotto? Can we heal up into a range where we get enough hits or get the crits? Let's just find out. So here we go. Faulkner, you absolute legend. I focus my energy on you. Oh, he's doing five damage per hit here though. So this is a two hitter on the Pidgey. I do not think we get through here because we missed so many low kicks. Um, here, Gust. And we miss. Okay, so that, that's game over there. Um, we need to not get misses like that. <laughs> that's the answer to this one. Yeah, if we got a crit there, we would have won still with one HP. But <laughs> come on. Come on. Let me just crit your birds. Here, maybe I just stop trying to crit and I just do this instead. Get through with more health. Assuming that he, uh, oh, crits me. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. This absolute beast. Faulkner. Because, I mean, we can flinch the Pidgey, and then we just get through with no damage. Okay, he does more damage there, but we survive. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't even mess around. We should just hold down the A button on low kick. That's the strategy. <laughs> as it usually is in gen 2 like they nerfed all of the stat debuffs and whatnot so the best strategy is usually just to to say let's go you know but yeah machop look look at his nice little animation oh man that's nice but here we've beaten faulkner we've got level 11 40 hp low kick leer focus energy now we're up to 26 attack, 19 defense, 16 in both specials and speed. We're not great, you know. We're going to really have to see if we can find a strategy that gets these fighting types through the next section against um, Bugsy. Let me just see when it... My system automatically rolls through the move sets, and I just want to see when we get back to the level up learn set. We get Karate Chop at level 13 and Seismic Toss at level 19. Okay. I mean, both of those could be useful. They're not going to be good against Ghosts by any means, but I think we get Mud Slap, don't we? So we Mud Slap on the... Whatchamacallit? On the Ghastly. And then if we can get to Karate Chop, that might be the play. Yeah, we, we got Mud Slap. We're going to be Slap Slapping, guys. All right, well, that does it for the Machop line and for the Jump Luff line. So let me just update on the back end. And then we've just got Apem left. All right, so now looking at the results so far, 
I mean, I think there are some surprises, right? We're at 68 pass, 38 fail. I think everybody knew that Hopip and Skip Bloom were going to fail, but it's kind of surprising that Jump Luff does in fact get through. So really in this episode so far, we've only failed with Abra, Hopip, and Skip Bloom. Everything else has passed. Everything else is just getting through the revolving door that is Faulkner. Like, come on, dude. Come on. You were supposed to demonstrate that Gen 2 is like so much better or something. And instead, <laughs> he's just like, meh, you know, like, uh, I'm just going to be kind of bad. How about that? You, How do you like if I'm kind of bad? <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe Apem will show us something. Let's just see. This is going to be very interesting, I think. So, uh, yeah. The last run of the day. Okay. So there is the legend that is Apem. And here, let's see what we start with. We get Scratch and Tail Whip. That's probably fine. Honestly. So, yeah. Apem. He's a... He's a kind of monkey boy. Oh, he looks like all glitchy over there, though. That's... The, the issue on the the moving sprite up there, I, I just import them from uh, Pokemon DB uh, into the overlay automatically. That's how I can just, you know, set everything immediately. But sometimes their their animations aren't very, very solid. Just saying. Looks kind of eh. <laughs> this one looks really kind of meh. So here, I'm going to start by trying to do this without a berry. This is one of my tests now, because if we can get through without a berry, then we just have an extra berry wherever we need it later on. You know, think it's think it's worthwhile. And unlike him, we're fast. We're doing good damage. Oh, he gets a crit turn one. But yeah, we easily won that. <laughs> This should be a very easy fight against Mikey. I think we just spam Scratch and win. Not quite a one-hitter there, but two-hitter. Level up to level six, we learned Sand Attack. And then we just destroyed that Rattata. Yeah, this is this is not looking too bad. All right, so Apem has made it to Faulkner's Gym. We have 24 HP at level six here. We're holding the berry. We've got Scratch, Tail Whip, and we've learned sand attack via level up and we have 15 attack 13 defense 11 special attack 13 special defense 17 speed i mean there are some things that i think could be good in this one but uh yeah we just have to see so here i'm gonna save the game let's get into this honest abe fight let's just see how it goes so here, let's start off with just scratches the whole way, you know, not even trying to mess around. Let's just, you know, go all out on attack and it works. Yeah. So there's no need to mess around with, you know, sand attacks, tail whips. If you had a worse Apem, if it wasn't a max DVs Apem, then maybe we need to go for those sorts of strats. But with a max DVs Apem, the best possible one, you can just scratch there. You'll get through. All right, so now we're up against the Pidgey guy, Rodney Dangerfield, and I'm just going to scratch. It looks like three hitters on these Pidgeys. We level up to level eight, so we get a damage rounding threshold. Still three hit KOs here, though. Okay, no problem. Nice. Now let's go ahead and potion up so that we have full HP. We'll give a berry here. I'm going to save the game. It's time to take on Faulkner here, so let's just see the stats. We're now up to level 8, we've gotten up to 29 HP. Same moveset as before, we've got 18 attack, 16 defense, 14 special attack, 16 special defense, 21 speed, so we should outspeed the whole team here. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will be enough to just beat Faulkner. But let's find out. I think the berry is important here. I think we're going to have to heal midway through, but... Let's just see. So here, I'm going to start with a scratch. And a scratch. So this is a three hit KO on Pidgey, no matter what we do. And I'm still going to just try to attack here. We heal up with the berry. And yeah, there's there's no need to even go for the accuracy strats here. Like, he got a critical hit there. We still survived with three HP. 
and we were able to knock him out and get to level 10. So, Apem, another Pokemon that has beaten Falconer. So, that's that's kind of incredible. Like, <laughs> you know, Apem, I kind of expected it. I, I watched the Squidgy run where he did Apem and Apem was really good and he was able to beat the entire game with it in a pretty good time. So, I kind of expected this Pokemon to do decently here. But, uh, yeah, it gets through Faulkner just fine. We are going to learn via level up soon Baton Pass, which is worthless. We'll get Fury Swipes and Swift. Swift is a TM, so we can just learn that via TM and Union Cave. Screech and Agility. Okay. But then I think we do learn Mud Slap, so we have a way to take down the Ghost Pokemon. And, uh... Yeah, we're just gonna have to see the rest here, how it goes, but yeah, really not too bad. All right, so now let's look at the updated list here. We have completed, at this point, 107 Pokemon. 69, very nice, have already managed to get through Faulkner on minimum battles. Some people are arguing that a couple of these that are even down in the fail column could get through with a little more optimization. We'll go back, we'll look at those in a future episode. Basically, after I finish this whole series, I'm gonna go back and look at some of these fail Pokemon just to give them another shot with user suggestions, etc. So stick around for that. Next time, we're going to be running a very interesting gauntlet of Pokemon. The Bellsprout line. Coming in at number 69 in the Pokedex right there, Bellsprout, legend. <laughs> but that line could be very interesting. I think Victory Bell will already have Sleep Powder, possibly. That's what it has in Gen 1. If so, it could possibly win there. I'm not so sure about the Weepin' Bell or the Bellsprout, though. In fact, Bellsprout, I'm pretty sure, doesn't get through. You know, they, they have it in this section of the game, so I just can't see any way they would have let that happen. Then we've got Tentacool and Tentacruel, who are two incredibly strong Pokemon, in my opinion. If we start with, like, Acid, we're gonna just crush that section, I think. And it, it kind of puts the game in a tough spot, because... Like, if we have Acid from the start of the game, then Chikorita's not really a challenge. But what is what is better against us than the Chikorita line, right? Then we've got, of course, the Geodude line, which I think will do reasonably well, but we're just gonna have to see how it goes with the Mud Slap action. Maybe Graveler and uh, Golem even have Rock Throw, I'm not sure. Then Sunkern and Sunflora are gonna be pretty bad, I think. Yanma is another one that might just be pretty bad. And then Whooper and Quagsire are going to be very interesting. Those will be our 13 challengers next time. will bring us to 120 total Pokemon run in this series so far. We're almost halfway there after the next episode. That's nuts. So, yeah. Anyway, that does it for this one. Thank you all for watching. If you have suggestions for strategy improvements, suggestions for... Um, just any sort of improvement to my routing. I'm learning a lot from you guys. You're telling me about the berries. You're telling me sometimes about different strategies that I should try to use. I appreciate it. Learning Gen 2, and I'm happy to hear your feedback and advice. Anyway, that does it for this one. So see you in the next one, guys. Later.